I'm William Holtz with Lake TV, and I'm excited to welcome you to a very important night of local forums right here on Lake TV, presented by the O'Sullivan Bruce Group with Remax Lake of the Ozarks. I also want to thank the Camdenton and Lake Area Chamber of Commerces for collaborating with us on tonight's forum. I also got to thank our official radio partner, the Key Radio Station, as well as our official news partner, LakeExpo.com. Now, as much as we all complain and let our opinion be known on national politics, it should go without saying that our local elected officials are actually the ones that will affect us the most. Tonight's forum is going to include candidates for Lake Ozark Aldermen, as well as the School of the Osage School Board. With that being said, we applaud you for tuning in and getting involved and staying informed. Tonight's forum wouldn't be possible without the generosity of our sponsor. Tonight's broadcast right here on Lake TV is presented by O'Sullivan Bruce Group, Remax Lake of the Ozarks, and brought to you by Bridal Cave, Rough Water Dock, Central Ozarks Medical Center, LakeExpo.com, the Key Radio Station, and of course, the Camdenton and Lake Area Chamber of Commerces. Now sit back and get ready for a great night of getting to know the candidates. At this point, I'm honored to turn it over to our moderator for tonight, broadcasting live from the Lake Area Chamber at Wilmore Lodge, Luke Hagedorn. Well, I thank you, Will. Apologize for the technical difficulties difficulties there. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2022 Meet the Candidates Forum for the City of Lake Ozark, the mun municipal election to be held on Tuesday, April 5th. This joint forum is the result of a collaborative effort by the Candidate Area Chamber of Commerce, the Lake Area Chamber of Commerce, and is presented by Lake TV and Key Radio. We welcome all the viewers who are joining us either online, live, or on Lake TV. Greetings to our listeners on 89.3 Key Radio, keyradio.live, or on the free app available on the Google Play or App Store. It's also good to be working with KB again. Live from Wilmore Lodge, there are two contested seats for the Board of Aldermen. In, one, in Ward 2, with one year remaining on the term, Mr. Larry Giampa and Krista Watts. Also in Ward 2, vying for the full two-year term are Sherry Jackson and Johnny Francesco's. On behalf of the Lake Area Chamber of Commerce, Lake TV, and the voters of Lake Ozark, I would like to thank you for your attendance and participation and look forward to getting to know each of you a bit better and learn about your thoughts and views on the Lake Ozark City Government. Before we get started, we do have a few ground rules to cover. Each candidate will be allowed two minutes for opening and closing statements and one minute to respond to each of the selected questions. We have a timekeeper and a clock up front. Once the question is complete and the response begins, the clock will start. Please be aware of your time or I will be obliged to make you aware. I will let you finish your thought in a reasonable amount of time, but if you start a new thought after the time has elapsed, I will have to intervene. If there are no questions or concerns, we will start with our opening comments. Again, each candidate will have two minutes. Determined by a random draw, our first speaker from Ward 2, vying for the one-year term, Mr. Larry Giampa. You have two minutes, sir. Thank you. Hi, I'm Larry Giampa. I'm running for the one-year term in District 2. Being an alderman is just not a title. It's a responsibility. Everything you do, everything you pass affects somebody. So it's important to be able to weigh everything that's going on. I have been an alderman here for two years. I was 12 years an alderman in Glendale Heights, Illinois, and the mayor asked me to run. I said, okay, when's, when, when am I running? This April? He said, no, in two years. In that time, he put me on the planning board and he put me on the zoning board, two different boards. He wanted me to realize everything that's involved to get to the point where you could be on the board. My last six months I spent on the budget committee. So all that adds up so you know what's going on. Government is slow, doesn't get much done. It takes a long time. We all wish it was faster. But all the right steps have to be accomplished and you have to make sure we don't make any mistakes. Aldermen are working for their district, plus they're also working for this whole city. They got to weigh what's going on in their district and how it helps, but does it affect the whole city? Everything you do is important, and everything you do, you got to really think out. I'm hoping that all of us, any one of us who went up here, 
think the same way because we want the best for Lake Ozark or we wouldn't be here. And I want to thank you for considering us and give me a vote. Thank you, sir. Also from Ward 2 for the one-year term, Krista Watts. Hi. Um, like many of you fine citizens of Lake Ozark, I was fortunate enough to make the lake my permanent home in 2005. My family has been coming here since the early 70s. When I think about why I'm choosing to run for alderman, I see the growth that we are experiencing here. And I believe that I'm a good representation of someone who has raised a family here and my children or grandchildren will also be growing up here. I want to ensure that we are set up for that growth and the lake stays grounded in what has made us one of the top tourist destinations. I am not a politician, but I am a business leader with a passion for adapting to the changes that we have before us. So if you're, if you're looking for something new and a change from the direction of the past, um, please vote for me. Thank you very much, Krista. Next, in Ward 2, for the two-year term, we have Sherry Jackson. You have two minutes. Hi. As he said, I'm Sherry Jackson. Uh, I won't get into what it means to be an alderman because I think they covered it very well. Larry did a great job on that. So I'm going to let you know a little bit about me because I think there's a lot of you that don't know me. I first came here in 1985, which was a long time ago. I came down here on vacation with my father. I have been a resident here since 1987. I've actually only been a resident of Lake Ozark. I've lived on W15, W22, W24, and now moving back to W22. Uh, I'm married, been married for 31 years. My husband is a lineman for Ameren. He's been down here since 1984. We have two children. My daughter lives on W20. Our son lives in Eldon, on the other side of Eldon, with his wife and our two great grand, or our two, I should say great, fantastic grandchildren. They're not really great grandchildren. So we, I began my career at the lake at Glen Cove Marina. That's the only place I've really worked at the lake since I've been here. I started out as a receptionist. I became a part owner in 2008, and my husband and I became sole owners in 2011. I retired in 2016. Over the years, I learned a lot about business, accounting, budgeting, marketing, working with employees, HR, you name it. We worked on grants, we got some grants together, customer relations, business relations, the whole aspect of being in business, and I would like to bring that to the city. First, I would say, as Krista did, I am not a politician. I'm a citizen first. I consider myself equal to all the citizens, as I did when I was at Glen Cove. I considered myself equal to them. I worked alongside them, and I would like to work alongside the citizens of Lake Ozark. I have no hidden agenda. I just have new perspectives that I would like to bring forward. Thank you very much. And finally, in Ward 2, uh, vying for the two-year term, Mr. Johnny Francescos. Yeah, my name is Johnny Francescos. My wife, Courtney, and I moved down here about 17 years ago. I retired from the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department with 32 and a half years on. I'm an Air Force veteran. Uh, we live off of W-24. Uh, I was a mayor, of course, for 12 years, and we accomplished a lot down here in my term as mayor. And the reason that I want to get back on is I've been a public servant almost all my life. Uh, my dad was on the fire department in Kansas City for 26 years. My boy's on for 28 years. We all are public servants, and it's hard to stop. And there were things that when I wasn't mayor anymore that we were working on and I would like to see them completed. So I would like to have a chance to come back and give me a chance to finish what we started 
as a team of uh, Lake Ozark, uh, you have to work as a team to get things done. And that's what we did. And I want to get back into it and do it again. Thank you, Johnny. As we discussed, uh, due to technical difficulties, we're a little bit shorter on time than we anticipated. So I'm going to, for now, uh, skip some of the more general questions and get into more of the specific ones. And uh, if we, we do have the time, then we can come back to those more general ones. Uh, but the first one we're going to ask tonight, and we're going to start down here on this end with, with Larry and work our way down. Across the country, police officers are leaving or changing their career in record numbers. Lake Ozark, unfortunately, has not been able to avoid this national trend. How do you plan to address recruitment and retention for the police department? Well, I firmly believe we lose our police because of pay. There's only 1,600 people in this town. We don't have a lot of tax dollars. We need to get more money to our police so they stay. It's a shame because I've seen a lot of good officers come and go but they get offered from somewhere else. It's our job to figure out how we can get them more money and how we could make them want to be here. We need housing for them. We need security for them. As soon as all that's in place and we figure out money, our police will stay. They really like it here. They work hard in the summer, but they still love it here. Thank you very much. Moving on to Ms. Krista Watts. Across the country, police officers are leaving or changing their careers in record numbers. Unfortunately, Lake Ozark has not been able to avoid this natural tr national trend. How do you plan to address the recruitment and retention for the police department? I'm honestly glad you asked that question. Um, I'm actually a daughter of a former KCPD police officer who was killed in the line of duty. So our services are extremely important to me. One thing that I think that we first have to address is to find out why they're leaving. So we need to have some type of survey so we can identify, is it truly pay or are there other benefits um, that are causing our police officers to leave? We need to be able to attract candidates. I do believe that the affordable housing could benefit in that area as well. Um, the police are, are not paid well so I do agree with Larry. We, we do need to look at that, but there's more to the picture to attracting police officers to the field. We are um, growing in population, so it's, it's something that we need to look at seriously and, and quickly. Thank you very much. Moving on to Sherry Jackson. Sherry, across the country, police, police officers are leaving or changing their careers in record numbers. Like, uh, Lake Ozark, unfortunately, has not been able to avoid this national trend. How do you plan to address recruitment and retention for the police department? I agree with the other two have said. Pay is not everything, although I believe that the police department, they all deserve more money than what they get. I believe that to be a policeman, a police officer, you have to just love what you're doing. You have to be wanting to do it because it is not for the money. They do need help in housing. They do need help in benefits. It's no different than a lot of other professions, but they put their lives on the line for us. And I believe that they deserve more than what they get. Thank you very much. And finally, on this question, Johnny. Across the country, police officers are leaving or changing their careers in record numbers. Unfortunately, Lake Ozark has not been able to avoid this national trend. How do you plan to address the recruitment and retention for the police department? Well, as mayor for 12 years, we've always had this problem. And uh, the other ones are right here. We do need affordable housing down here to, that they can afford to live in and work here. Uh, a lot of the cities uh, make their employees live in that city. Luckily, we don't have that uh, that that uh, in there that they have to do. So, but it would be nice if the employees lived in the city that they worked in, 
They felt familiarized themselves with a lot of people, a lot of places that they have trouble in. Uh, I think they're doing a fine job. We've come a long way on the uh, police station that we used to have. It used to be a, an abandoned fire station. When I took office here, we changed that. We put them in with a new city hall that we were uh, overcrowded in. So uh, we've come a long way in giving them a better place to work, the working conditions. And uh, we're doing, when I was there, we were doing our best to keep up our salary with the uh, surrounding cities. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully that uh, if I get to be uh, all right. an alderman again, that we can continue working on this. Right. Thank you, Johnny. Appreciate you. All right, moving on to the next question. And with this one, we'll start with Krista Watts. Krista, events and activities in the city are particularly on the Strip in Lake Ozark, are one way to bring visitors and their economic impact to the, our local businesses. As an alderman, how would you support or regulate those events to the benefit of the city as a whole? I think events on the Strip and our city as a whole are important to, to our city. When I look at other cities, I look at the way that they execute some of those. One of those um, that I find executed very well is Thursday Night Live in Jeff City. They actually block off the Strip or um, High Street and it's very well organized. I can see something happening of that sort, of that nature um, on our strip to where we're actually creating the funds to be able to do some things, put it towards our city sidewalks, put it towards the roads, uh, put it towards even being able to have um, docks so you can actually boat up to the strip and bring that family atmosphere back. I think that would be perfect for the Strip. Thank you very much. Moving on to Sherry Jackson. Events and activities, particularly on the Strip in Lake Ozark, are one way to bring visitors and their economic impact to local businesses. As an alderman, how would you support or regulate those events to the benefit of the city as a whole? Well, I will say that I think that I would very much enjoy being on the committee for the events. I think the events are very important to the city, um, to the whole area, not only for the strip on the lake, um, getting the marinas involved, um, you name it. There, there are so many different ways that we could have different functions. And I do agree with Krista as far as possibly closing off a, a particular section so that it is safer and actually easier for the policeman to to maintain. So uh, I do believe that events are very important. They bring in a lot of revenue. They bring a lot of happy people to the lake. And I would like to see them continue and grow. Thank you very much. Johnny Francescos. Events and activities, particularly on the Strip in Lake Ozark, are one way to bring visitors and their economic impact to the local businesses. As an alderman, how would you support or regulate those events to, the, to benefit the city as a whole? Well, we've had, uh, we've had those events on here for a long, long time. And I think our police department is doing a fantastic job in taking care of the problems that come up. And so far we've been awful lucky. We've had that one incident that happened down here. And uh, the events, uh, the Magic Dragon, I, uh, everybody loves the Magic Dragon car show. They come to it every year. The events we have once a month down here, uh, the car shows that we have, are a lot of people come down there and they love it. The uh, Bike Fest, it's uh, fantastic down here. And we've been awful lucky on this Bike Fest that we haven't had more incidents than we've had. And I'm for uh, having all the events that we could have. And uh, the BDSA does a fantastic job in uh, what they do to get these events down here. 
uh, hopefully that it keeps going and uh, we are stay safe. Thank you very much. And finally on this question, Mr. Larry Giampa, events and activities, particularly on the Strip and Lake Ozark, are one way to bring visitors and their economic impact to the local businesses. As an alderman, how would you support or regulate these events to the benefit of the city as a whole? Well, the city has just organized a new event committee who are really taking more control, trying to get them more consistent, taking care of things like cleaning it up and doing what it, people have to do. And I think consistency in the events will bring more people here. The events bring people down here, we wanna keep them. So we wanna make it so they have fun, but they wanna move down here five years from now or six years from now. I had businesses on this strip. Events are big. We need the events. Everybody on the strip needs them. You got like four months to make your money that makes it all year. So if we can make them smoother, we can make sure there's parking, we can make sure that beer and alcohol is blocked in certain areas so they're not out on the street, everything will work smooth and we'll get more down here. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next question, and Sherry Jackson will start us off on this one. Sherry, if elected, how do you plan to keep your constituency informed on the issues facing the city and the decisions made by the municipal government? Again, I will reiterate, I am not a politician. I've not sat on the board of aldermen before, so I will have to find out what is possible and what is not. But if possible, I would like to be able to communicate through my Facebook page. I would like to be able to help with the, I've, I've researched um, quite a few things on the internet with the city's page. And I would like to be able to help in that regard because I believe that we could actually post more things more timely on our own page. Thank you very much. Next up. Johnny Franciscus, if elected, how do you plan to keep your constituency informed on the issues facing the city and the decisions made by their municipal government? Hmm. Well, we've always had this. We've always had activity on the strip. Uh, one thing that I really worked on and tried very hard to get, and it's really hard to get, is the things for the kids to do. There's not that much uh, to do for the kids on this strip. I think that if we had a place that we could uh, have for the, the kids that come down here, uh, like two-bit town and things like that, that bring the family down here where they could, they could leave their kids and they could play and then they could walk around and look at the strip and everything. So. Uh, I really think that uh, we need to do something for the kids when they come down here. Uh, the activities on the Strip does good for the businesses on the Strip. Uh, they do a fantastic job in taking care of the people that come here. I don't think I've ever heard one person that ever came to me and said, oh, I don't like this place. They've always came down here and said, we're coming back because we like whatever they have there that they like to eat there or whatever. Thank you. So we've been really lucky about it and uh, hopefully it keeps up. Thank you, Johnny. And Mr. Giampa, if elected, how do you plan to keep your constituency, constituency informed on the issues facing the city and the decisions made by their municipal government? Well, about a year and a half ago, we hired a gentleman that ran a, runs a web page. The web page is great. It explains everything. Our biggest problem is to get people to get on that web page. We got to be able to somehow promote it and have people looking at it so they know what's going on. If everything's done ahead of time and organized, people will know exactly when the events are happening, exactly when th what's going on, and be able to plan accordingly. I, I don't know. In, in some towns, they send out a water bill and they put a note on it and it says, you know, read the web page or ask them a question. We need a better way to contact our residents so they know to look at that page and they'll enjoy our town a lot more. Thank you very much. 
Krista Watts. If elected, how do you plan to keep your constituency informed on the issues facing the city and the decisions made by the municipal government? I want to kind of reiterate what Sherry said. Of course, I'm not a politician, so I'm going to have to learn my way on what I can share and what I can't share. Um, I am an extremely transparent person, but I'm also an extremely confidential person. So if we are working on matters that, you know, it's still confidential, that's not something that I'm going to share. But I have a very strong Facebook following between my career at Maurice's and just uh, my racing family. And I know that I can get the word out. So just like Larry was saying that we do have a page, but I could share that, share that with Lake Area Happenings. There's a ton of Lake followers on there. I don't know that anything gets the word out as fast as Lake Area Happenings does. So if there's something we need the people to know, we will get the word out. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to our next question, and uh, Johnny, you will lead us off on this one. No forum could cover all possible issues that may come before the decision makers in the city of Lake Ozark. If the last few years have told us anything, we should expect the unexpected. What is your approach to handling controversial and complicated issues? Okay, I can, I can read that again. No form could cover all the possible issues that may come before the decision makers in the city of Lake Ozark. If the last few years could tell us anything, we should expect the unexpected. What is your approach to handling controversial and complicated issues? Well, it's like I've always said, we have to work as a team because that's the way we did it on the fire department. If you can't put out a fire by yourself, so you have to work as a team. So you have to make sure that everybody that's involved in making this decision knows what they're talking about and gets all the facts and everything that you need to know so that you could make a decision. And a job as an alderman, if they're on a committee, most aldermen are on the committees so they can inform uh, their committee people to get out and this this make sure that everybody knows uh, what they need to know to, to make the decision. Very good. Moving on down to Larry Giampa. No forum could cover all possible issues that may come before the decision makers in the city of Lake Ozark. If the last few, few years tells us anything, we should expect the unexpected. What is your approach to handling controversial and complicated issues? We all have to realize everything's not in our control budget, anything else that's going on, you got to have something set aside for the rainy day. Whether sewers collapse or something else collapses, you got to have money on the side for it. As a government, we got to prepare for, for the worst. And if we don't get the worst, good for us. But we need to know what possible things can happen. The pandemic, nobody saw coming, but we got through it. And, we'll, and we can get through anything. A nice, strong board will come up with the right answers and get us through it. Very good. Krista Watts, no forum could cover all possible issues that may come before the decision makers in the city of Lake Ozark. If the last few years tell us anything, we should expect the unexpected. What is your approach to handling controversial and complicated issues? When I think about this, the board... I mean, it's not just one person. So you, you've got a team sitting beside you. It, that's the time to be proactive, not reactive, and start researching some of the things that, that might be ahead of us and being strategic about if that would happen, what would be some of the steps that we could take? I think that that's part of what you do in your city council meetings, um, in your planning committees. Uh, you, you talk about the what could be's and you make that plan and then you're not at a loss when you find yourself in that situation. Thank you very much. Sherry Jackson, no forum could cover all possible issues that may come before the decision makers in the city of Lake Ozark. If the last few years tell us anything, we should expect the unexpected. What is your approach to handling controversial and complicated issues? 
as a business owner in a seasonal area, it became very evident that we had to plan ahead. We always had to strategize and we had a great team at the marina, uh, team leaders who would always talk about different avenues, different ways to continue to make a profit if things went bad. So it's no different for the city. We are a board. We would be a group of people who can work together, can strategize, can budget, can work on ideas for the rainy day, basically. Uh, the last two years were difficult, but Lake of the Ozarks seemed to come through it very well. Um, I just, I think that it just takes a team and we've, we've just got to do day by day and um, look to the future as well. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys have been respectful of the time. Uh, we're going to slide in one more. Everybody had a chance to go first. Everybody had a chance to go last. We have time for one more question before we get to closing remarks, and we'll make this a nice, short, and simple one. And we'll start with, with Larry on this one. Assuming you had the support, what one measure would you implement almost immediately being, upon being elected to office? Probably the first thing I would really want to do is ban Trump trucks on the strip unless they're making deliveries. Our strip is falling apart and it's because of the bigger trucks using it as a shortcut. The first thing I'd like to do is make it so they can't do that anymore. Our streets are falling apart. That'll make it a lot easier on all of us. We don't have enough money in the budget to maintain the street, let alone repair the street. So I think that's the first and most important thing I do. Thank you very much. Krista Watts, assuming you had the support, what one measure would you implement almost immediately upon being elected to office? Larry, I hate to tag off your idea, but for me, it's not necessarily banning the trucks on the strip, but it would be protecting our dam. So <laughs> I, it's been hard not being able to drive across the dam this whole winter and to see it not open still. So to protect and preserve it, I mean, we've got 242, we can get to the strip that way, but I would keep all, um, anything over a, a double axle off of that dam. Very good. Moving on to Sherry Jackson. Sherry, assuming you had the support, what one measure would you implement almost immediately upon being elected to office? Well, they took my idea, so I'll come up with a different one because <laughs> I totally agree. We need to protect the dam. And um, one thing that I would really like to do is I'd like to see, similar to what Branson has for a local's discount, that's the one thing you go to bars, you go to restaurants, you go to um, any kind of activity at the lake and they don't offer uniformly a locals discount and I would love to implement something like that. Thank you very much and finally Johnny, Johnny Francisco's assuming you had the support what one measure would you implement almost immediately upon being elected to office? Well we all know that the streets are bad but being a mayor for 12 years it takes money to fix these streets and a lot of money and this is something that the city has been trying to fix for a long time luckily there's a couple of places that we we didn't do because uh, right now they're putting uh, uh, sewers in in certain streets and when we had the strip out here that we talked about getting it fixed at one time. We had water lines that needed to be replaced. We were gonna have to dig it up again. So this is my thoughts on it. I don't wanna put a new street down and then we have to turn around and dig it up. So my priority would probably be that if this TDD goes through and uh, we can get some grants to fix our streets, then let's do it. But, you know, we have a lot of people come down here 
two. Johnny, thank you. Uh, and that's your Johnny, and that's your time, sir. I'm sorry about that. You 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 will get to lead off here with the openings with the closing statements, so you can continue that thought next. You're next up on closing statements, but we get went over time there. I'm sorry about that. So that concludes our question and answer portion of the evening, and we will now give each candidate an opportunity to make a closing statement of up to two minutes. We will go in reverse order of the opening statements, and again, please be aware of the timekeeper. This is your chance to speak directly to your constituents and ask for their votes. Leading us off, to continue on that thought, Mr. Johnny Franciscos, you have two minutes, sir. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, if I get to be an alderman again, I would work very hard, very hard to uh, uh, bring things to the strip and, and down here. But when I came down here 17 years ago and I was elected the mayor for 12 years, uh, I accomplished, we accomplished as a team a lot. We've got 242. We've got a new police station in City Hall. We've got Eagles Landing. We've got sirens, warning sirens that we didn't have. We've got uh, workforce housing. We've got uh, senior housing. Uh, we've done a lot in the 12 years that I was mayor. And I didn't do it myself. We did it as a team. And that's what I would stress if I get to be an alderman. We have to work as a team to get anything done. So if uh, we can do that, I appreciate your vote to put me back in there where I could help do this again. Uh, I've been a public servant a long time and I can't stop. Thank you. Thank you very much. Up next in Ward 2, also vying for the two-year two term, Sherry Jackson, you have two minutes. Thank you all for having us here. We really appreciate it. Um, I'll keep this short. I'm running for the two-year position um, in Ward 2, Lake Ozark Board of Aldermen. Keep in mind, again, I am not a politician. I'm not a public speaker either, so <laughs> this isn't the easiest thing for me, but as if I get on the Board of Aldermen as I go, I will be learning as I go. I am a pretty fast learner if I have good teachers, and I believe we have a lot of existing aldermen that will be just that. Um, I am here to listen to the people and bring fresh ideas and bring their ideas to the table as well. Hopefully I can bring new perspective, pers perspectives excuse me, to some of the ongoing issues of the city. And I can take each issue as it comes. I will promise that I can do my research, my own research, and I will talk to the citizens. I will work with the board and then make a decision and vote in that respect. I hope, to, I hope to bring new ideas and help with the city's future, and I'd appreciate your vote on April 5th. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next speaker, also vying in Ward 2, but for the one-year term, Krista Watts, you have two minutes. Well, I want to thank you for giving us this time before you. I just want you to remember when you're choosing to cast your vote that I bring a fresh perspective to the board. I want to stress, again, much like Sherry, I'm not a politician, but I do bring with me a lot of life experience. I relocated to the lake when Marisa's came here, um, there over at Pruitt's Point, back in 2005. Um, I'm currently a district leader for Marisa's overseeing 20 stores in Missouri and Illinois. I know what it's like to grow a business here at the lake. I also have experiences through my family. My father was a Kansas City police sergeant who was killed in the line of duty when I was just 19 years old. I am married to a career firefighter. Both of my daughters graduated from the School of the Osage, 
And my oldest daughter is um, serving in the Air Force full time for the past seven years. The lake has been my happy place since the early 70s, as my family has been a second homeowner since then. I can remember skiing from the Gravois Arm all the way to the dam and what I wouldn't give to have that stamina back in my legs. Just know that I will work to preserve what we all enjoy about the lake, but also support it in prospering in new growth. Thank you very much. And our final speaker from Ward 2, vying for the one-year term, Mr. Larry Giampa. You have two minutes, sir. Thank you, and thank you for holding this. I don't think there's any place on our board for a politician. Leave the politicians in Washington. The people here are not politicians. We are residents protecting where we live and making it the best place to be. You don't run because you were asked. You run because you love the city. You need to have goals. Understand it takes a while to get them as accomplishments, but it can be done. We all have to be individuals. We got to, everyone on that board's got to speak their own mind and eventually come up with the right answer and what's best for the city. When I got on the board last time, the first thing I voted on, I was the only no vote. And because they, they didn't agree with it, I thought the exact opposite, but you've got to be able to accept that and do that. I'm very proactive. Being reactive just puts you behind the eight ball. There are six aldermen on the board. They make the decisions. You get advice from the police chief. You get advice from the administrator. You get advice from the mayor. But the six aldermen make the decisions. It's their job to do their homework on everything that comes up and be smart about it. I've been a business owner on the Strip. I've owned two successful businesses there. So I have the, I have the combination of being a resident, being an alderman already once, and being a business owner. And all three of these together make a lot of knowledge. You don't do it just because it helped my business. You don't do it because it helped my block. You do it because it helps the whole town. I'd appreciate your vote. Otherwise, I gotta spend the nights with my wife. Thank you. This concludes our 2022 City of Lake Ozark Municipal Election Meet the Candidates Forum. Thank you to Lake TV, KB, and 89.3 Key Radio, the Lake Area Chamber of Commerce, the Camden Area Chamber of Commerce for all their efforts producing the forums over these last two evenings. This valuable service to the voters of our communities would not have happened without the selfless efforts of so many different folks. Also, thank you candidates for your willingness to not only join us this evening to let the voters hear directly from you, but for your willingness to put your name on the line in an effort to serve your fellow citizens. Thank you again to the viewers and listeners at home. Make sure you get out to the polls on Tuesday, April 5th, and let your voice be heard. Godspeed, everyone. Good night. What do you need? Did you see that new listing in Sunrise Beach? Yeah, it was just listed two minutes ago. It has 150 feet of lakefront. And a brand new kitchen. I'm headed out there after I type this email. I'm on the phone with my clients. Hey, where are you going? I already put an offer in. Cash, above list, and it's looking good. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. What is COMC? A health center where everyone has access to high quality, affordable medical, dental, and behavioral health care, regardless of insurance or ability to pay. Offering primary care, preventative, chronic, pediatrics, and OBGYN. COMC even offers comprehensive dental and same day emergency care. A health center that focuses on every aspect of your health. Everything your family needs to stay healthy. At COMC, your health is our mission. Discovered over a century and a half ago, Bridal Cave continues to amaze those who venture through it. As you tour through Bridal Cave, you'll see massive onyx formations, giant columns, and the one and only Mystery Lake. Bridal Cave's unique stalactite-adorned Bridal Chapel has provided a truly unique backdrop for over 3,000 couples from around the world. Bridal Cave is open daily, rain or shine. Guided tours leave every few minutes. 
Come explore the lake's favorite natural attraction. Explore Bridal Cave today. There's a new radio station at the lake. A radio station that's geared towards the community. A radio station where you can have a hand in what we do. Welcome to Key Radio, a community-based radio station that invites you to be a part of the solution. We encourage you to become a content creator. That's right, you provide the content. Listen in at 89.3 or online at keyradio.live. To find out more about becoming a content creator, call 573-280-0532. When you purchase a boat, you're making a pretty big investment. And when you purchase a Crabco LLC Roughwater Dock, you're protecting that investment in the best ways possible. Roughwater Docks are built to be maintenance-free, and they exceed UE standards, so they provide you with peace of mind for years to come. Crabco is a full-service dock company that offers commercial construction, swim docks, add-on slips, and more. They are Ameren UE certified and fully insured. Crabco LLC Roughwater Docks, the peace of mind you want, the protection you need. Most people don't know which direction they're heading when it comes to retirement. Whether they're still on the journey or already there, at SRG Financial, we have a process, the mile marker formula, that helps you pursue your work optional lifestyle so you can focus on what's most important to you, like your family, or checking off those bucket list items. Start taking the first step toward finding your work optional lifestyle. Call us today at 573-302-7212. It's new, it's here, and it's now. It's the Lake Expo app. You asked for it, now Lake Expo is bringing it. Featuring more news, more real estate, with more boating and boats for sale, and more of what's happening at the lake. The Lake Expo app is feeding your need to know. Stay connected to the lake from anywhere. The lake is always just one click away. Download the Lake Expo app today, available on the App Store and Google Play. Hey everyone, Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. I'm sitting here today at a little outdoor set. I know this week the weather's calling for some nasty stuff, but before long we're going to want to get outside and enjoy this great Ozark weather. Come see us, we have tons of stuff available ready to go, and it's all on sale. Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake, where we're bringing happy home. 